When choosing a render engine, it's important to know the good and the bad. So today I wanted to take a look at some of the bad that's involved with Octane and volumes. So I just have a quick scene set up here, nothing complex, just a simple cloud, just using the Houdini cloud tools uh, to generate this cloud, uh, nothing really complex there. So. I have enabled the Octane Volumes properties in the Octane uh, tab on the cloud, so make sure that you have that. I also have a Octane Material set up with the volume settings that you see here to get this nice white looking cloud. And if I bring over the render view here, you can see this is kind of what it looks like. So nothing really spectacular, but it's a simple cloud. So drag that off screen here for now. The kind of major stuff that goes on with volumes, I've noticed that volumes make uh, Octane very unstable and it crashes a lot. So just keep that in mind if, if volumes are something that you use a lot, uh, make sure that you save quite often because they tend to crash the program. So I wanted to just do some stuff in here. So first of all, let's actually jump out of this and create a geometry node and let's just drop in a sphere here if I can type just for reference of where we're at in the scene and that should be good uh, actually we will need a material for this as well so let's just do an octane material builder and then a universal material and that should be fine let's go ahead the material here as well and we will select our material for that so now let's take a look at one of the major issues in my opinion that octane has with volumes and we'll do that by dropping in a transform node so let's i'm just going to pause the ipr over here let's go ahead and just move this around so we'll drag it kind of off over here and maybe we'll just rotate it a little bit as well. So I'll drag, bring this back onto the screen. I'll unpause it and reload. And we have our, our volume moved, which is normal, which you would expect to see. So let's just kind of duplicate this transform. And I'll just pause this and drag that back off screen for now. And let's move this over. Let's maybe rotate it a little bit, give it something different. And let's drop in a merge node here. And let's see what happens when we merge these two together. Bring this IPR back, unpause and we'll reload. And you see the issue. So we have our uh, second volume that we created here and we lost the first one, which really kind of sucks. Disable depth of field as well. Because uh, that's not what, what you would want to see. You want to see what you see in your viewport. You see two volumes in the viewport. You expect to see that in the IPR. So that's kind of the first issue. So maybe we're just merging them wrong. So let's use a volume, uh, a volume merge. Maybe we can fix it this way. So we'll just add them like normal. Bring that back. Actually, add's not even working. I have anything or we've lost it in the viewport. Uh, I'm not seeing anything in there. Let's see if anything happens in the viewport here. Nope, nothing going on. So vast. I don't use volume merges because volume mix is typically what I get to work. And there you see the first issue that we got going on, which like I said is that Octane is extremely unstable when it comes to volumes. So I will be back. All right, so we are back now. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. So drop in a volume mix and let's wire these up and see if we can see what's going on here. So nothing going on. Let's actually disable this material and let's put it after our volume mix and We'll add it. So now we have both volumes showing up. Let's go back to our Octane shelf and bring our IPR back. And let's see if that shows in the viewport. 
So it looks like we do have two in the viewport here. Uh, looks like we do need to also go back in and change the material. Looks like our material maybe got changed a little bit. <clears throat> no, just looking a little bit different for some reason. Go back to camera one and we've lost everything. Whoops, that's not the right button. Or we just zoomed in. Let's reset our view. There we go. So it looks like our clouds got kind of screwed up. Let's go back into here and let's just bring it over this first one. Actually, that would be probably why I don't have the material connected anymore. Let's reload that. There we go, that's looking better. So now we have both of our volumes showing up, which is awesome. It's what you would expect. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this, drag that off screen again, and I'm just gonna duplicate this volume mix as well as duplicating this transform. And let's set our display flag here. And let's go ahead and move this around. Let's move this up, rotate it a little bit, get something different. And let's pipe in all this to our volume mix and into our material and let's see what we get. So we got our two clouds from before and this third one. So let's go ahead and reload this and we'll see if it is working. So we actually do have a third one. Uh, so this is kind of an unpredictable thing. With volume mixes, I tend to, uh, a lot of times they I can get one to work and then a second one I can't get to work. So looks like we got lucky this time and a second one is working, but uh, I couldn't get the this to work before. So like I said, this is kind of the issue with Octane is it's really unpredictable and you saw the crash that we had before. So uh, very, very unstable with volumes and you never really know how you're gonna get them to work. Let's maybe even just try to add another one and we'll see if we get any different results. Oops, don't want that. Let's add this, let's drag this down, rotate it around. Let's add a new volume mix. See if duplicating it was the issue. And there we go again, adding volume mixes when the uh, IPR is open seems to just crash octane. So we'll reopen this and take another look. All right, so back with a different scene now. Uh, I wasn't running into the issues that I was seeing with this scene, so I decided I'd just load this one up and we would take a look at what's going on in here. So as you can see, I just got like a, a little hot air balloon that's uh, got the moon on it with a cloud as the balloon. And then I got a bunch of clouds down here below the hot air balloon. So you'd expect to see all of these clouds showing up and all of them in these positions. But if I bring our IPR over, it's very clear that these clouds down at the bottom are definitely not there. So I'll drag that off for a second. Let's go ahead and maneuver around actually. Let's just maneuver around and see if we can find it. So it looks like we found our clouds and they are way off from where they should be showing up. And looks like they're even a lot bigger than what they should be. Just totally in the wrong spots. You can see that they're in the viewport, they are right on the hot air balloon, but you can see that they're just moved totally out of place in the IPR. It looks like they're actually, no, they're not even at the origin. They're just kind of moved all randomly just out in space, nowhere near where where they should be, um, which is not at all what you what you want to have. So there's a bunch of other render engines that don't run into this issue. I don't know why Octane does, and it's extremely frustrating, extremely annoying to move these around um, and put them in place in the viewport where you want them, and then have them not show up in the IPR or the render where you have them placed. So. I uh, just wanted to 
take a look at, at some of the issues that Octane has with volumes because, in my opinion, these are these are very, very large issues that Octane has. I uh, don't like making videos just bashing on anything, to be honest, um, but this is something that definitely needs to be fixed. There's no reason that there should be this big of a discrepancy of where things are being placed um, in the viewport versus in the actual um, render view uh, that you're seeing with your render engine. Just out of poor implementation, I'm not really sure. Um, looks, It just seems to me like Octane and Otoy are just trying to make a tool that is, you know, available for everything, but not really fine tune and really make it great for um, the programs that it is viable for. So definitely uh, super, super irritating with Octane um, crashing all the time. And to be honest, it's really put me off with Octane. I don't know why it started crashing uh, so heavily with, with volumes. I'm not sure really what's going on there. It just doesn't like them. Um, but I think I'm gonna be gonna be dropping Octane uh, from my my tool set, which really kind of sucks because I do really like the way the Octane looks and the just kind of the images that it generates. It's also very easy to set up and work with, so really sucks. But uh, it's just too frustrating to work with all the crashes, um, and I've started experiencing crashes in regular scenes as well that don't even have volumes in, which really sucks because I wasn't experiencing that for a while. It's what me, brought me back into Octane and started making me use it again because I thought they had fixed some of the issues, but apparently not. So just wanted to kind of show this so that you guys can make an informed decision when you guys are choosing the render engine that you want to use. Um, right now I would, I would lean toward Redshift or um, even some other ones. I'm going to be taking a look at, at some other ones. Um, take a look at their implementations into Houdini since that's my primary tool now, or even if you got a, a, a decent uh, CPU, take a look at Clarice because you don't have any sort of issues like this in, in Clarice. So anyways, hopefully this helped you out and, and gave you a better insight into what you might run into if you were to pick Octane as your render engine. But I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel, uh, some other stuff on Redshift, some other stuff on Octane, a uh, bunch of stuff on Houdini. So if you're interested in any of that, go ahead and check that out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.